We know that 1 plus 1 is equal to 2 and minus of minus 1 is equal to 1. But how? And how do these identities play crucial roles in the construction of vector addition and scaling a vector? Also, how do these further help to establish the concept of a vector space over a field, where vector spaces and fields are essential mathematical structures providing the foundation for various mathematical concepts and applications. And most of all, how can we get the notion of a field? On top of that, understanding the fundamentals of 1 plus 1 also provides insights into Piano's axioms and how natural numbers are constructed. So let's have a deeper insight into these fundamentals. What can we say about 1 plus 1 to be? Well, we know that 1 plus 1 is 2, which is exactly twice as that of the value 1, the unit. Let us consider the real axis having the origin indicated by 0. Now if the unit length is defined by this, then let's label the position at the unit distance according to this unit length from the origin on the right side of the real axis by 1 and on the left side by minus 1. Here we can think minus 1 to be the reflection of 1 with respect to the origin. Here basically we can think this 1 to be the position after shipment of a ball from the origin by unit length on right. And if we take the same action again, then we can represent the position by 2. Here we can think 2 to be the successor of 1. So if we take twice the action of displacement by unit length, then the dot will reach at 2. That's how 1 plus 1 becomes 2 times 1. And in the similar fashion, successor of 2 becomes 3. Then we will get 4, 5 and so on gradually. Interestingly, this will give us a rough idea about how Piano's axioms and natural numbers are constructed. Now let's come back to 1, the unit. Here 1 represents a point having a static position. Now if we add a direction here which is on the right of the origin, then the point will represent a vector having unit length and we'll call it the unit vector, which has magnitude and direction but no position. So we can place it wherever we want. It doesn't matter. It will represent the same vector regardless of its position even if the vector is on the left side of the origin unless until its direction becomes opposite. It will represent the same the unit vector. Now minus 1 is at a distance 1 from the origin. But if we want to find out the relation among minus 1, the origin and the unit vector, then just repositioning the unit vector, we get the magnitude is same, but the direction on which the minus 1 is from the origin, the unit vector has exactly different direction. So long story short, here minus 1 and 1 are at the same distance from the origin but a different direction. And we can simply justify the fact that one has different sign from another despite having the same magnitude. But only because of having different direction using simple trigonometry. Now for simplicity and for better understanding, 
let's consider the union vector to be represented by u. Now if we rotate the unit vector by an angle theta, projection of that vector on the unit vector represents the vector itself scaled by cos theta. Here in this case, theta is 40 degrees. And when the value of theta becomes 180 degrees, then it's the vector u scaled by minus 1, that is minus u. Here both of u and minus u have same magnitude, but exactly opposite direction. In one dimensional real axis, they become different vectors with same magnitude. And we have considered the union vector to be represented by u. That's why let's represent those vectors as vector 1 and vector minus 1 respectively. Here, if we consider the 0 t to be the mirror, the minus 1 vector becomes the reflection of vector 1 on the mirror. As well as, we can think the vector 1 as a reflection of minus 1 vector on this mirror. That's why, we can simply conclude vector 1 is minus of minus 1 vector. That's how, all the points on the right side of the axis centered at the origin, the 0 t, represents a vector which starts at the origin and the point becomes its terminal point. And the point on the left side at a distance equal to the length of the particular vector also represents a vector negative to the previous one. You can think that's why we represent the right side of 0 t as positive and left side as negative side. Here with respect to the origin, these two vectors are reflection to each other having same magnitude and the reflection is indicated by a negative sign. Now these two vectors represent the same unit vector together with the right one having a little displacement. And we know that a vector only has direction and magnitude but no position. So if we want to add a unit vector twice, basically we arrange the second one where the first one ends. That is basically the position of a ball which travels a unit distance by every push is pushed twice in the right direction. The end position of that ball on the axis represents vector 2, which is of magnitude twice and direction same as that of the unit vector. And we can represent vector 2 as 2 times of vector 1, where 2 is a scaling vector, which is a real number, a scalar. And that's how we can have vector 2 by scaling the unit vector with factor 2. And that's why vector 1 plus 1 is 2, which again is the 2 times vector 1, where 2 is the scaling factor. And also, vector 2 is on the static point 2 of the real axis. That's how every single static point represents a vector emanating from the origin and terminated at that point, which we have by scaling the unit vector by the positional value of that static point. Now generalizing this concept, we can represent every single vector by scaling the unit vector by some factor. In particular, if a vector is away from the origin by x times of unit length, then it will be placed on the static position x on the real axis and obviously that will represent the vector x which we have by scaling the unit vector by scalar x. In order to add two vectors, first let us consider vector 2 and then let us consider vector 3 as well. Now we can reposition vector 3 by starting at the terminal point of vector 2 
to add these two vectors and the addition gives us 2 plus 3 times unit vector which is 5 times unit vector now as 5 times unit vector is vector 5 therefore we get the result of addition as vector 5 and if we just simply change this direction to exact opposite of vector 3 it will be vector minus 3 now the addition of these two vectors 2 and minus 3 can simply be visualized by shifting a dot representing a vector 2 unit on positive side and then 3 unit on the negative side which then will be stopped at the static position minus 1 representing minus 1 vector that's how 2 minus 3 is minus 1 and here we can think of the axis the set of all real numbers as a collection of vectors where each of its static points represents a vector and we have seen two operations vector addition and scalar multiplication where the scalars are from R considering as a set of all real numbers that's how we can consider R to be a vector space over the scalar field R. Essentially, all that was said about vector operations like vector addition and scalar multiplication is true for all real numbers. Likewise, many other number systems serve equally well. To describe these number systems, we list the properties of the scalar that are needed and are led to the concept of a field. We introduce field here before turning to vector space. A field is a set together with two laws of composition called addition and multiplication which satisfies the following axioms. Addition makes A into an abelian group and its identity element is denoted by 0. Multiplication is commutative and it makes the set upon non-zero elements of A into an abelian group and its identity element is denoted by 1 and its identity element is denoted by 1. And lastly, the elements of F obey the distributive law which states that A times B plus C is A times B plus B times C for all A, B and C in F. And as an example, the set of all real numbers together with addition and multiplication is a field. Now let's define the vector space. A vector space over a field is a set of vectors together with two laws of composition called vector addition and scalar multiplication which satisfies the following axioms. Addition makes V into an abelian group and its identity is denoted by 0. 1 dot V is V for all V in V here 1 is the identity element of the scalar field and dot represents the scalar multiplication and it follows the associative law and distributive law as well as stated. For example, R as a collection of vectors is a vector space over the field R and R is a one-dimensional vector space over R. Here in this lecture series, we will not go deeper into vector space and field, but we will look at the fundamentals of how to construct a vector space over R, which has more dimensions.